Hi everybody. So one of the things that we commonly, or at least that I commonly encounter in practice when a person comes with back pain is very often times a person will say, oh, it really feels like I need to stretch something. And in some cases that, that's appropriate, but in other cases it's probably not what you want to do, but it kind of depends on, on the situation. So if you're experiencing, let's call it like low grade stiffness, it's been going on for, you know, as long, far back as you can remember, you know, you're stiff in the morning, you sit in the chair for a long time, you're stiff moving around, whatnot. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, in that case, stretching certain muscles or stretching, you know, the, the lower back and the pelvic region, um, maybe doing some type of like attraction type thing to your back could probably be helpful. Um, that can be anything from, you know, lightly hanging from a bar, just letting gravity just kind of add a little bit of traction into your back, um, you know, or, or using some type of like an inversion table or something. But basically, uh, uh, distraction in the chronic, stiff kind of feeling in the back is, is, is probably fine. But uh, more often than not, a person comes in and their back suddenly started hurting them recently, like in the last day or so. Um, so we'll use an example of like, you know, let's say it's gardening season, you're out in the garden, you're moving your bags of mulch and you bend over to pick up the bag and you go to lift it and you feel something let go in your back or you feel like a sharp pain in your back that maybe initially feels like it's swelling quite a bit and then the next day you wake up and it, it hurts but it also feels really, really tight. Those people will also come in thinking like, well, you know, do I need to stretch this out? And probably not in those cases. Probably, come on over here, a little closer. So probably what happened in that case, if I can get my spine off of this, is when you were bending forward and you went to engage all the musculature and, and grab something like the bag of mulch or whatnot, you probably went into a little bit of uh, a shear injury. So it's, it's not gonna look exactly like this, but basically one part of your back basically buckles compared to the rest of the back, causing like a gapping motion happening at the segment. So basically what you've done at that moment is you've added a little bit of instability into your back. So if you've added instability into something, chances are stretching or trying to pull it apart even further is not the way to go, right? So if you dislocate your shoulder, you need to relocate, you need to get it put back in. You don't want someone saying, well, let's, let's stretch all those muscles and ligaments and tendons even further and see how we do. So in this case, again, right, the pack pain came on suddenly, it came on probably, you know, with some type of like a, a bending action, you're bending over to do something, whether it be pick something up or, um, you know, pick something up off the ground, even like bending down to grab a, uh, you know, a drop pencil or something, and your back suddenly goes there. So that's typically more often a shear injury. You don't want to necessarily introduce more instability by stretching. And instead what you want to do is you want to start building stability back into the system. Now in some of our other videos, we touched on some of these basic exercises that you can do. Um, one of them that we introduced was the bird dog, or no, sorry, the dead bug. But in this case, it's gonna be kind of a variation of a, of a dead bug. It's gonna look kind of exactly the same, well, or very, very similar. But again, it's the idea of you're trying to take your spine and you're trying to basically crunch it back together and add stability into it, okay? So, how does that look like? So come on down. Can, into the floor here. So um, one of the ways that we talked about with the dead bug is the concept of flattening our back into the floor. So if I just lie down on my back and I'm just being very relaxed, I'm gonna naturally feel a bit of an arch, a little bit of a gap between my lower back and, and the floor there. Um, when we're working on some of these exercises, the goal is what we're trying to do is we're trying to reverse that arch or, or kind of pack the arch down into the ground. So if we can think of my pelvis, if it's, if you follow my fingers, if it's tilting back this way, I want to tilt my pelvis up in this fashion, like so, which pushes my lower back into the ground. Now I can cheat this, right? I can leave this alone and I can actually just lift, I can do like a stomach curl or stomach crunch and get the same kind of feeling in the lower back, but that's not how we want to achieve it because we're not really using the musculature around our pelvis to stabilize. We're, we're instead pulling a lot of weight forward, which just naturally rounds my back down. But that can actually make some of this back pain feel worse if that's the method that you're trying to do. So you want your head back, nice and relaxed at first. We have this small arch. You can place like your hand underneath the lower back like so, just to kind of give a little bit of feedback as to how hard you're pressing into the ground. And from here, all you're gonna do is you're gonna tilt your pelvis, kind of squish your hands like pancakes. You're gonna have one leg extended and you're gonna lift the, the leg several inches off the ground. And now this is the tricky part. I'm not gonna curl up to lift, but I'm gonna instead 
lift my body kind of straight, looking up here, and I'm already kind of shaking, and then back down. So again, I squish my hands into my, or sorry, I squish my lower back into my hands, making, kind of making them feel like a pancake. One leg up, lifting but not really curling my body, and then you can even start to add a little bit of leg pulsations. Just add a little bit of challenge to the system, right? The idea is the, the main goal is stabilizing your back. And what I'm doing with my leg, what I'm doing with my upper body is kind of, it, it's like adding weight onto the bar. I'm adding a little bit of resistance to the movement, but the main thing is I want to maintain and keep that tight posture as much as I can, not let it go. If you feel that you're trying this and it's too difficult to lift your, your, um, your upper back off the ground or it's too di difficult to pulsate your leg because you're losing your position, then just focus initially on that initial pull. So from here, focusing on the press into the back and even just holding it for a count of five, three, four, five, and release. And again, going back, one, two, three, four, five, getting nice and strong, feeling that position, and then slowly over time, adding the movements to the exercises to make it a little bit more challenging. Because eventually you will come to a point where holding this isn't as challenging as it could be. All right, so remember, acute lower back pain, sharp pain that, that you know feels really tight or, or, or feels like it's swelling afterwards. Chances are the idea is you don't want to try to deal with that by stretching or adding a lot of extra movement into your back, but you actually need to stabilize your back to help reduce that back pain. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.